Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to the channel. If you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you already here, man, I appreciate each and every one of y'all. And we just gonna get right into this. Let's get it. And I just did a video uh, with DC again, just kind of showing my rotations in a raid. And I started thinking about it. I haven't actually gone in depth to where I put my, you know, my skill points and stuff. Um, so I figured, hey, why not? You know, no better time than the present. Um, it's pretty straightforward, nothing, you know, out of the ordinary or, or weird or whatever. So obviously with this, I just go, uh, you know, I just, I do the chain lightning. Um, obviously as you can see, I have 422 skill points. So I can almost do, you know, pretty much what I want. But uh, I do this um, mainly for, you know, my uh, my uh, my open world stuff, or uh, um, essentially, uh, it kind of helps, you know, build up, um, you know, super, you know, especially if I'm being lazy. Um, you know, nothing really major. And that's it for the weapon. Uh, but flight, obviously, I go all the way down. the left side here I don't really mess with anything here uh, even though vacuum bubble depending on the loadout you're using is uh, is a good um, you know, obviously uh, it's not going to do a super amount of damage it's pretty decent but for the sake of proccing your Gemini because it's a 25 percent um, I got that in a different loadout which I'm gonna go over in a second uh, the one I'm doing now as you can see is uh, uh, my single target but obviously because of the Obviously, because of the solar amplifier and having that maxed out, um, it's going to be an AOE, so it's not actually a single target. But it does, you know, the most damage to a single target, at least for a might-based nature. Um, <laughs> so as you can see, you know, I got all of the uh, elite gear um, now. I don't like Type C or the Type D mod for DPS. I, I think it does absolutely nothing. Uh, so I kind of just alternate, you know, by using the Might for my Type A and B, and then using my Healing one for the Type C and D. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have these at 235 or whatever, but I'm not missing enough Might that's going to really make a difference. Uh, as you can see, I'm at, you know, 44.5. Uh, I do have a Cola. Um, so my, my base is around 43.2, I think, something like that. I mean, obviously it'll go up a little bit once I get my, uh, my book, which, not my book, my scrap, uh, Soul Cloak, which I just, uh, I just re-got, um, I decided to switch it up for my Grimorium, which I still have here somewhere, which is right there. Uh, just... The pet just didn't seem like it was really doing anything. I mean, yeah, it was doing a little bit more damage. But when thinking about it, obviously nature relies heavily on its ability to switch in and out of wolf or gorilla, what have you. So the more you're able to do that, obviously, the better. Well, by having the supercharged, uh, you know, basically a supercharged generator in the artifact as well as your uh, as somebody else in the group like a healer or a tank running I in mean, your your super is just going to build up to a point where you're going to be able to consistently use your super throughout a raid uh, so yeah I use the scrap obviously it's only 119 so I'm missing I'm, I'm missing quite a bit of might from that you know 2% uh, as well as the extra supercharged generation now I got my eye to 160 as well as my solar to 160. Now, now the iconics, obviously heat vision. Uh, I usually do robot sidekick and uh, pheromone bloom um, on my DPS, just because I like to to test a lot of things out, mix and match. Now, obviously, robot sidekick is um, you know essentially best for a, a precision loadout or uh, like that first loadout I kind of showed, you know, uh, not too far back, you know, a loadout that doesn't use too much power, um, only because when you use Robot Sidekick, your power regeneration is just trash. Now, this that point's just simple, you know, you go hybrid. 
I mean, God, it was just on that hybrid. All right, so your stat points is pretty simple. Obviously, it's super powered, uh, basically for the might power and more importantly, the power regen. And then your critical attack, chance and damage. Uh, obviously, I have enough to, so I max out my mountain power and then just put whatever else I can in health because nothing else is going to help anyways with DPS, so you might as well put a little bit in health, maybe help with your survivability. Plus, with anybody running a, if you're running a Tetra or anybody else, you know, things of that nature. Uh, nature. But, um, if you're not able to max out your might and power, you essentially just want to put as much as you possibly can in this. So you get these two first, and then put whatever you can in this. If you have enough to max it out, obviously that's great. If you don't, just put them all in here. And then, you know, this, this the loadout, you know, pretty simple. It's not too, it's, it's pretty similar to my, my, uh, the last loadout I kind of showed, except the difference is instead of vine lash, you replace it for heat vision. Uh, and it's pretty straightforward. Now, basically the point of this is a single target. So essentially what you'd want to be doing is you just put up your two poisons and they go straight to heat vision. Um, now, if you have all your supers charged up going into a uh, boss fight, then essentially what you would do is you'd get your poisons, switch straight to wolf, then into heat vision. Just so that way you can get your heat vision in with the buff of the Gemini, and then you just continue your rotation. Free, voracious, refresh, heat vision. Free, voracious, refresh, heat vision. And then rinse and repeat. I mean, literally until the boss is dead, you just be doing the three voracious, refresh with harvest, heat vision. Now, basically, you just want to pay attention because if mechanics or things of that nature throw you off your rotation, um, just play it safe. I'll always just throw harvest up just so I know the poisons stay. Just so that way, because if your poisons fall off, your damage will fall off just as much. It's they might not do a lot of damage individually, but the longer they stay up, on top of the fact that Voracious itself does more damage to poisoned targets, poisoned enemies take additional damage. So if you lose your poison on a target, your damage will drop off noticeably. Which is why this, this rotation works so well on bosses, is because you apply your poisons and that's it. And the rest of the rotation is literally just heat vision, be voracious plants, harvest, heat vision. Now the reason why you only do the three voracious plants is because as you can tell you do the three and then harvest, and by the time you do that, your heat vision is off cooldown. Now uh shoot. Actually you know what? I'm gonna go to the league hall. Um just because of the multi targets there. Oh, I gotta get out of combat first. New. New. Alright, I'll see you guys in a second when I'm at the league hall in front of those, um, in front of those, uh, targets. Alright, so basically the reason why I wanted to come here for the multi-target is, I mean, there's not much of a difference, really. It's literally just throwing one spell on the, f the start of the rotation. Other than that, it's all the same. Alright, so basically, let's say you're on the boss fight, and, uh, you know, if you're already on the boss fight and there's no adds, like, for example, let's just do that real quick. Now, let's say you're going through your rotation, and you're on the boss fight, and you just, I'm not going to use the supercharge yet, and you're just going to run your rotation normally. Now... The benefit of this rotation is you don't have to restart the rotation and add your poisons again because they're already on the boss. Oop, mess up. So pretty much as soon as the you know the adds come out and they get close enough to the boss and you use your refresh, which you're going to do anyways, you now spread all those poisons to the adds normally. So then you can just continue with your rotation. So the only one that will take damage from Briar after the initial contact is the middle target. So 
that is the reason why you want to use harvest because now as you can see you're hitting all three targets with the actual damage Somebody was just there. Where'd they go? Was that the cat? <laughs> Anyways, so pretty much like I was saying, the initial hit will hit all three of them, but the damage, the dot, will only hit the middle one, the target. So you have to hit harvest on that to make sure all three are taking the damage. Now I'm gonna sh I'm gonna do it on single target first, and then I'll kind of show you with the multi. Uh, even though this isn't the best, you know, ad loadout, um, I'm kind of lazy at times and I don't switch, but it's still it's still extremely viable. thing you have to be careful about is when you're switching to wolf form you don't want to hit your X too fast uh, only because if you do it'll proc the spell but for some reason the animation from wolf cancels it As you can see, even without using the uh, supercharged generator, it still builds up pretty quick because of that soul cloak. Now, um, obviously, if you had a uh, healer uh, running Gemini, you know, that's basically your best friend. Alright, so, as you can see, the the rotation will always pretty much do this. Uh, this is kind of pretty much any rotation you use uh, with Might Nature. Is the first rotation is pretty much always going to do a lower amount. And it's still just under 22k. And the second rotation was about 23k. And then as you can see with the third rotation, you know, because I got the two wolves on it, it was 26k. I'm weary of all this dickery. Come to me, if you dare. I control the Spear of Destiny, the Mark of Cain, and the Crime Bible. You are powerless before me.
my sigil to clear the blood rage. What are you doing? You are more Druze to command. Didn't listen, did you? I told you that thing was gonna break free. No. Back. I am the Dark Lord. Ah! Ta-ta, Mordru. Right, we've still got to deal with that thing, or we're all bollocks. But no pressure, right? of order should be able to close that crack in the sky now. In the meantime, I've got an ibis stick chock full of power. That power is not yours to command, John Constantine. You say that, but it's in my stick, isn't it? Let it go, John. That much power could corrupt the noblest soul, much less yours. I will, love. Just gonna settle a few debts first. Damn it. Typical John. I'll work with the Lords of Order to put Gotham right. If you ever need anything from me, I'm there. Just say the magic word. I guess we'll go over the the multi-target loadout. Actually, at least one that I've been messing with lately. Um, I have like four or five multi-target loadouts. I'm usually too lazy to switch to the uh, you know switch during a raid to use it, so I just usually stay in my my boss loadout loadout. Um, but I just figured I haven't actually done an actual ad loadout yet, so why not? And essentially, it's just the same thing. I do this just to kind of help build some super if I'm bored or lazy, what have you. Uh, like I said, just the entire left side, and as you can see. In this loadout, I do do vacuum bubble. I don't use it in the one I'm showing you. Uh, and then again here, I don't get robot sidekick because this loadout chews up power anyways. So you don't want to use that. Uh, hard light shield, I don't use it in this loadout. But in some instances, it's not a bad one to throw in your loadout. Especially using this rotation. Uh, pheromone bloom, just to mess around, you know. Um, and obviously heat vision. 
Now the stats are the same thing. You know, you go focused uh, with your super powered. Critical attack chance and damage. And then either max out if possible in mountain power. Or put as much as possible there. And then the rest in health. Now the loadout. Obviously it's, it's the same two. Your uh, Serpent, Call, and Thern, um, and uh, Briar. Uh, now the reason for these is well honestly it's their uh their animations uh more so briar's animation over uh, over vine lash's animation and super the serpent call is your supercharged generator i mean you can essentially jump you know jump cancel or jump clip that with just about anything uh thorn burst is essentially your replacement of harvest it works the same exact way except it does do a bit more damage than harvest does uh, Savage Growth um, is essentially the replacement for Voracious Plants uh, just because you're going to be up close and personal and Savage Growth hits for a ton. And then Heat Vision. Now, I know Heat Vision is essentially your main single target spell, but again, because of ha uh, the Solar Amplifier, and you know if you're a Might Nature DPS, your Solar amp Amplifier should be maxed anyways just for that 5% Might. But because of that, it makes it an AoE, and it still hits hard. I mean, hard. So we got that in there. Now, this is kind of just a filler, uh, just to get through, to get to your, your, your gorilla form, because the, the point of this is to get into your gorilla form. Now, this rotation, just your regular damage rotation as is, will just destroy your power bar. It's just... Let's just make sure you're aware of that. Now, obviously, in gorilla form, we do the same, the first same three. Uh, well, all right. So, obviously, in gorilla form, uh, we get rid of Briar. Um, we keep Thorn Burst and Savage Growth, but we add Impaling Thorns. Now, obviously, as you can see from the interaction with because of gorilla form, it targets and damages more enemies so a group of ads you'll hit with this now especially as they start getting lower with health because it's a 35 percenter it'll obviously do more damage then and then your heat vision with your return to normal because again you're trying to get in and out of gorilla now if you go and watch the um uh, i'm gonna actually put it in this video later on um or I might make a separate video for it, just kind of a to be continued, if you will. But if you watch the video uh, that I'm actually showing this rotation in a raid for, um, if you're running into a regular raid, one that's you know very easy to get through, uh, ads are going to burn out quick. Um, this isn't going to really hit as hard with a smaller group of ads. You know, let's say if there's only three or so ads that are gonna just burn quick as, you know, crap, you're only gonna get into your rotation maybe a second time before the ads are dead. <laughs> Which is essentially gonna kill your damage because your thorn, uh, um, your impaling thorns at that point isn't going to hit for its full amount because they're gonna die while you're casting it. Uh, so, dude, like in elite raids, perfect. Perfect. Alright, so now we got a gorilla form up. We are going to run the rotation like that with the gorilla. And just to show you the difference in how much it hits for. Alright, so again, you start it the same way. I did that backwards. Now with this one, you get your savage off and then your gorilla. And this one, you kind of just run the rotation backwards. Because as you can see, each spell kind of corresponds with the cooldown of the previous one, so you're just fluently running right through it. Now, again, with this one, the more you're able to switch in and out of Gorilla, the more damage you're going to do. But look at just with the one switch to Gorilla, it's already at 52k. Oh, 
Alright, so we basically go and run it through uh, without any sort of buffs, no no switch, no Gemini, just straight rotation. Alright, now just for the sake of the rotation's order, we start with heat vision only because of the cooldowns and how much more fluid it is. I'll show you, I'll try to show you what I mean after this. I'll do it uh, the other way. Now, as you can also see, the rotation itself. Now, not the most power hungry, but without a decent troll in a fight that lasts long enough, you might have some power issues. Oh, we're not gonna, I don't think we're going to get through another 30 seconds of this power. Yeah, definitely not. We're definitely going to lose out on a lot of damage. Actually, it ended up breaking out to be about the same. Now, if we didn't have to wait those couple seconds in between there uh, towards the end, it would have been a little higher. But you know, as you can see, without buffs, you know, about 42k. Compared to with the uh, with the gorilla buff as well as the Gemini buff, it'll get you know between 52 and 61k on average. GG. Shazam started it. Oh, Shazam, you're gonna die. He said he was going to go eat like two and a half hours ago.
Such a disappointment. If you cannot defeat them, let the Harbinger feed upon your power. Master, no. I have been as loyal as a hound and as cunning as a cat. And still, you failed. <coughs> I've got a bad feeling about this.
should have known better than to count on you, Faust. This beast will make better use of your power than you ever could. Mercy, Dark Lord! I don't want to see that thing get a bellyache. To me, if you dare. I control the Spear of Destiny, the Mark of Cain, and the Crime Bible. You are powerless before me.
Stand in my sigil to clear the blood rage. Let the wisdom of Solomon calm you. Shazam's wisdom of Solomon can take the I'll edge save off. You from the madness. I can use the wisdom of Solomon to call me.
I'll save you from the madness.
Solomon's own. Lords of Order should be able to close that crack in the sky now. In the meantime, I've got an Ibis stick chock full of power. That power is not yours to command, John Constantine. You say that, but it's in my stick, isn't it? Let it go, John. That much power could corrupt the noblest soul, much less yours. I will, love. Just gonna settle a few debts first. Damn it. Typical John. I'll work with the Lords of Order to put Gotham right. If you ever need anything from me, I'm there. Just say the magic word. If not for you, that creature would have devoured the world. How about a 75k 30 second parser? How about that? All right, now, um, I do have a few videos uh, up, I guess, while I was healing, but uh, I guess, you know, during those, I was still getting used to the readjusted, if you will, to the game, because I had just got back from a break. Um, I wasn't really used to running any of that content, at least healing it. Um, I'm going to try to be doing uh, an elite um, fellow as well as a Shattered Gotham sometime this weekend. Uh, with me hailing it, uh, just to kind of show you what I'm about to tell you a bit better. Now, obviously, you know, your healer is the same thing. Uh, I do the, 
I do the the pulse beam. Now the reason I do this for uh, my healer is because mainly because of my weapon mod. Uh, as you can see, I use the replenishing adapter uh, just to give me a little bit extra power back. Um, now, I know a lot of people who use nature or do nature guides will tell you vigorously to stay away from regeneration. It's such a horrible supercharge. Ah, lies. Don't listen to them. That is BS. And obviously shows they do not actually pay attention these powers and they do not actually test them properly I will go over that in a second uh, obviously your regeneration boost with your neck mod accelerated swarm shield just so you can get that out quicker even though it's got a short cooldown as it is um, now my chest I do the obviously the supercharge so between my chest mod my scrap and my eye uh, as well as the chain lightning attack you know the super builds up really quick um, that I actually have to replace because uh, at one point um, or certain points I do use roar um, now there's a lot of instances that it's not viable only because with the same principle as your DPS you're trying to keep your pheromones up as long as possible without having to refresh them only because of uh, for the power efficiency um, and okay let me get into that for a second now we go into the loadout now as you can see um the priority <laughs> it costs just under 20,000 power to use it once now it's a little less than half of my power pool I can use that twice now yes I understand that you got a troll in there but a troll's not critting a troll's not even critting for anywhere close to that amount so that that's a couple seconds a few seconds tick and in that time a lot can happen in these raids so the point is trying not to use that as much as possible now you can essentially cheat this one by using orb of orion now i know a lot of people who heal or use healers will swear this power off I mean this artifact off uh, as you can see mine's not max yet which will be even better for me when it is max but as far as nature because everything we do relies on our hots and our priority our priority itself does as well it's no different it, the difference between its heal with the hots compared to without is night and day so being able to have another extra priority being cast for you and it says upon casting um, a priority you summon a special acolyte now the cast a priority heal for uh, X amount of percent we'll just say 50 right now of your base priority heal now think about this nature's priority heal works off of the pheromones now if your pheromones are up that means the priority that you're pet is casting is your priority so it should work the same now if your pet's casting this now let's say your pet cast it at a point where it's needed at even just luckily or it works out to where your pet cast it where it's needed so now you don't have to cast it that just saves you or me rather almost 20,000 power now as you can see that's just under half of my power pool Now, um, I did have Philosopher's Stone, which, to be honest, it seemed like a great idea. But it's, it's just that that is an ass artifact. Now, I lost some Resto with it, but the benefits I get from Soul Cloak make up for that in so many ways. Now, we'll go through the rest of the rotation. Um, you know, pretty straightforward. You got your Bloom and your Metabolism. Obviously, those are your Pheromones. Uh, your Blossom your, for your Priority. Flourish, which in my opinion is your most important power. I'll get that to the second. Uh, Swarm Shield, which an, is a shield so many people just crap all over and I don't understand why. I swear by this shield and it has never left my loadout. Uh, and then you use, I got my Insectoid form. 
Um, just because of the extra healing buffs that you get, uh, if it, you know, in a pinch or whatever, you pop into your insect fo uh, form and then straight to your priority, which will just make your priority hit a bit harder, uh, things of that nature. Um, so yeah, so pretty much what you do, uh, now, okay, I keep saying what you do, but I'm gonna go by what I do because not very many people do what I do or play like I play. So essentially what you're going to do is, alright, uh, you get into a raid, now, I gauge what I do based off the tank. Now yeah, I will heal if DPS start taking damage, but it's not, it's not my preference and it's not what I go in there looking for. My first and main focus is the tank. Now as soon as the tank starts losing health, I'll get this up. Now this, I will not start, like, she, you can jump cancel that at any time. I'll go over this in a second. Um, I right, actually, actually, let me just do that right now while we're here. Alright, so pretty much the reason why you don't want to jump cancel this is because if you jump cancel it any sooner, then you see how much of the plant's up, the heal's not going to be as, as good. You'll, you'll notice that you just... It, Alright, let's see, ready? See, this one's is screwing me right now because it keeps coming up. Maybe it's because I'm not in combat. But in a raid, actually, let's see, let's do it like this. Alright, we'll get in combat. Let's see if it changes. No, it still does. Alright, see, this is making me look like a liar. But as somebody who's run this power and healed a lot with this power, Actually, I've, you know, I've been this power for three years. Um, I can tell you right now, if you jump cancel that, your, uh, your, if you jump cancel your bloom too soon, it's not going to heal for as, it's, it's not going to heal for as much as it, you know, should. It's not going to be as strong a heal. So you kind of want to let that one go through. Uh, obviously, you don't have to let it go all the way through. Essentially, what I do is I wait for the four sides. As soon as you see the four sides come up, you're good. It'll do the max it can, which also allows you to cancel out of it a little sooner. And then you get your metabolism up, so that way both your pheromones are up. And then usually what I'll do right after that is I'll instantly hit flourish. So that way, it, and again, that works identically to harvest or thorn burst. It will spread your pheromones to everybody in the raid as well as refresh them. So the timer will start all over again so you don't have to recast them. So essentially what I do then is afterwards it's a matter of waiting. Um, what you want to do is literally every time, every time your flourish comes up, you hit it just to make sure your pheromones are up. In between, you're doing chain lightning. Uh, if the tank's taking too much damage for your, your hots alone, you got your shield. For emergencies, you got your priority, which will be a nice big burst heal. But then either way, everything always leads back to flourish. And if you do this, literally, as soon as it's off cooldown and you cast it, you will never have to restart your pheromones. Now, as you can see from my power bar, your power bar will love you which means the troll will love you, which just leads for a much smoother run. So basically, again, just a, a little quick recap, is you get this up, four sides, you can jump cancel it right into your metabolism, and then you flourish to make sure the whole group's covered. Now you, can always, you can always do that all at once, to be honest. I'll show you just what I'm talking about. Because you can jump cancel into metabolism, but then clip that, with flourish. So, ready? And right there. Just like that, the whole group's covered. Now you can see that's half your power bar. But your whole group got your hots. And then you can shield if anybody's taking too much damage, which will obviously stop them from taking damage, so your hots will continuously heal them. And then you can just power uh, attack with your chain lightning, as well as the troll, to get your power back. And then again, from there out, it's just emergencies with your priority and your shield. And then again, 
making sure you cast flourish as soon as it's off cooldown just to ensure that you never lose your pheromones now uh, the i i don't think it's it's necessary that i explain why bugs in there apart from the extra heal buffs and stuff that you get from it but obviously because of the gemini as you can see that extra supercharge boost right there it, it's just wonderful and sometimes it comes in at a very good time now now I'll show you I'll t uh, I can't exactly show you per se right now uh, but the reason why I switch out my supercharge regen for my shield in bug form is now the Gemini, uh, the buff lasts about six seconds, right? So it lasts six seconds with a cooldown of six seconds. So that literally runs the same course as your buffs in healer form. So pretty much by the time your Gemini is good to use again, the buffs from your bug are no longer, you know, active, up and running. So it's not like you're doing any more heal than you normally would, just in human form. Uh, now, the reason for regen is because it is just as viable as any shield in the game. Period. I don't care what anybody says. Again, as somebody who has used this power for three years and has used this super the entire time, I can tell you that, for example, um, I'm going to try to get some clips together from some stuff I was healing and I used it in elites, not regs, in elite raids and current endgame raids. I pop this super and I stop healing. Like, I don't mean that I'm not healing. Like, I mean, right, so the super's healing. I'm not casting any more abilities. So the super's literally doing all of it. And nobody will die unless it's a one-shot mechanic or too large a group of adds, right? So essentially, any mechanic that's going to burn through a shield or kill through a shield anyways... Is going to do it to this super. But everything else. Everything else that a shield stops. And prevents you from dying from. This is going to as well. So that's why I said. I, I, I swear by this super. And it is OP. Because here's another point to this. While that super is up. It's healing everybody. And enough to the point where they're not going to die. Which means you're not having to cast any of your spells. Which allows the troll to help replenish your power bar. It allows you to do power attacks to replenish your power bar. Maybe do a mechanic. Just a whole lot of just extra versatile stuff. Now again, the reason why I leave Return to Normal is one, to be able to continuously switch in and out of bunk form, yes, but two, to allow the versatility, say we have two healers, and we get to a point where we don't really need the second healer, but the burn's kind of dying down because maybe we've got one too many who died in a row. Well, now, because I don't, I'm not restricted to the one form, I can switch to DPS if need be. Now again, um, I'm going to show, I'm going to put videos with me actually running these rotations and uh, using these things in actual raids. And I'm just, you know, again, for anybody who might sit here and look at these or think of these as wrong or useless or misleading or what have you, I really don't know what to tell you. Because I'm throwing it all out there for your eyes to see. You know, I'm doing it, I'm putting it in a video, I'm putting it on YouTube. You know, I'm not throwing anything up there, I'm not mis I'm not lying about anything, because again, I am giving you visual proof. And these are all things I use in game. Now here's the thing with this is a lot of these rotations like you see with people that you see people using, more often than not, 
if you want that rotation, you're going to actually have to watch them use it. And I, what I mean by that is a lot of people aren't putting their OP rotations on YouTube. So, so a lot of these videos you see talking about being best this, best that, it's, it's, it's really not. It might appear to be because you don't see anything else better, but that's because the people with the better rotations, they're not showing them to you. They're keeping them for themselves or their inner circle. And that's facts. I don't care what anybody says. Honestly, I don't, I don't care. I don't think it's helpful to the server to, to allow people to use rotations that might not be the better one. Or to force people to use one specific rotation, which in a lot of uh, circumstances and you know uh, situations... Are going to handcuff them and the whole I guess the whole point of doing all these different videos with all these different rotations is to kind of show you that you don't have to stick to just one and be good in this game and uh, to be honest I believe I'm proof of that like visual proof again all right man this, this is gonna be a pain to edit but hey, we gonna do it. We gonna get it up uh, as soon as possible. And uh, hey, we'll catch y'all in the next video, man. Y'all be safe. The Harbinger can't scare us!
Fire, fire, fire. Fire suit, watch it. Hey, that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate each and every one of y'all stopping by and taking the time to watch this. And hey, remember, I know I'm going to keep saying this, man, but if you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for many, many, many more videos to come. And for those of y'all already here, man, I appreciate each and every one of y'all. And we'll catch y'all in the next video. Y'all be safe. Later.